Now, I have the honor of presenting Dr. Rubina Sheikh, who is an uh, important leader of the World Cindy Congress, located in London. And uh, she will tell us about the present situation of the Sindhi people of the south of, uh, in the south of Pakistan and their, their, uh, their relations with the Baluch issue, their relations with, with Pakistan as a country, and the history of, of the Sindhi nation, and what they believe the United Nations also can do for them. So, Rubina. Thank you, Dr. Chomsky. <coughs> Looking at the history of so-called independence of Pakistan for more than 60 years. Pakistan military establishment has adamantly maintained its dominance intact. The insistence on status quo and the refusal to negotiate even a little on sharing the power has created the chaotic state named Pakistan. Pakistani state, that is the government, military and the ruling elite involved in all kinds of violence against its own people as well as other people across the border. Today, Pakistan is symbol of intolerance, human rights abuse, Islamic fundamentalism, and terrorism. <clears throat> Pakistani establishment has never shown any sign of willingness to negotiate in a peaceful manner. It has always resorted to violence, be that against Bangladeshis in 1971, Balochis in 1947, 1973, and current operation on Balochistan, or Sindhis in 1983, 86, and 90s. State violence continues against Ahmadis, Christians, Shias, and Hindus every day. It is virtually impossible to go over the list of human rights violations occurring in Sindh and Balochistan. However, I would like to briefly go over a few examples of violations of human rights and inflicted on people of Sindh and Balochistan. Violation of right to development of indigenous people and indigenous nations. Unemployment rate is at its peak in Sindh and Balochistan. People are resorting to suicide and crime and drug addiction is at rise. Today, 70% of Pakistan budget goes into defense related ex expenses. Pakistan will increase its defense spending by 17% in 2010 and 11 fiscal year which is 442 billion rupees, which is equal to 570 billion thousand dollars, up from 378 billion in 2009 to 10. To justify such a huge defense expenses, Pakistan engaged in regional wars. On one hand, Pakistan is spending billions in nuclear bombs, and on the other hand, people of Sindh and Balochistan are dying out of drought and famine. Unequal allocation of financial resources through, throughout the years, despite the fact that the Sindh remains the largest con contributor to the country's federal income, the province is currently bankrupt and unable to carry out its day-to-day operation, not to speak of any meaningful development. While the oil-rich districts of Sindh make a significant contribution to the national economy, the locals continue to live in abject poverty. In the 16 districts producing oil and gas, the socio-economic indicators are dismal and most of people living below poverty line. One of the key issues faced by the indigenous Baloch nation is the fate and future of Gawadar Port, a strategic port whose development will either unlock the riches of Central Asia or plunge the Pakistan in savage and potentially, potentially terminal civil war. Because yet Gawadar is another example of a project where the local population or indigenous population's welfare is not taken care of. The displacement of people, the resulting demographic changes, the environmental damage, the onslaught of Baloch people areas or non-Baloch people in Baloch areas and federal government direct deals with Chinese and other international agencies without asking the will and stake of indigenous Makanis or Baluchis. Number two, violation of language and cultural rights. The majority of People speak Sindhi language in Sindh, and Sindhi was the official language of the region even under the British law. In the current so-called democratic setup, however, the Sindhi language has been marginalized to such an extent that its survival is under threat. The state-controlled media and so on. There has been a constant and systematically Sindhi schools shut down throughout the province. Federal policies that increase the urban-rural divide are detrimental to Sindhi. The gap has been a central factor for many social conflicts in the province, resulting in the deaths of tens of thousands of people. 
Furthermore, Sunni Sufi thoughts, which are more secular in character than the Orthodox Islam, have been systematically threatened as the state engaged in itself in a pan-Islamic propaganda. The suppression of Sindhi culture and the dominance of state-imposed social life created hopelessness among Sindhis. A common violation of minority rights. The current setup in Pakistan thrives on religious dogmatism and intolerance. There exist the numerous laws and policies that demand social political states of religious minority and sect. There is a separate electorate system for non-Muslims. The last family laws is still intact and practice. Government provides a patronage to madrasa school as a hub for pan Islamist militancies. MQM, in support with Pakistan establishment, has not been engaged in killing and suppression of indigenous Sindhis only, but also to create instability and internal conflict in the Sindh. They have started attacking Baloch community based in Sindh. The Baloch population has come under extremely shocking attacks, allegedly by ISI, Spons Killen, recently violence in Karachi, Baloch dominated areas, led to the targeted killing of at least more than 20 people. Violation of rights of women. Significant number of women are subjugated to violence, abuse, rape, trafficking, and other forms of degradation of their spouses and members of society at large. The government failed to take action in high-profile honor killing cases, and such killings continue throughout the country. The adoption and implementation of ZIDA, Convention on Elimination and Discrimination Against Women, remain a question in Pakistan. All domestic violence and honor killing cases are treated as a family matters. Since Pakistan's inception, Pakistan has been under direct or indirect military rule. Never has Pakistan established itself as a true federal and democratic state, and today's current constitution has proven completely inadequate in progressing towards that end. Rather than safeguarding the rights of Sindhi and Baloch nations in the recent reform of constitution of the religious minorities and Hindus and Christians and Ahmadis and Shias, the other marginalized groups, the constitution has become the very instrument of hegemonic control and military domination by which the Punjab majority subjugates all other ethnic and religious minority in critical majoritarian Zulu. General Musharraf committed more murders than General Pinocha of Chile and still today he enjoys the freedom and security from international community and sitting in the London Club. Pakistan establishment constantly involved in plans with MQM, which are designed to divide rural and urban areas of Sindh and control Sindh's resources and subjugate Sindhi nation. Some of examples of these systematic plans to control Sindhi nations are construction of mega projects over River Indus, manipulation and demographic changes in Sindh and Balochistan to convert their indigenous population into minorities, manipulating historical nations' homelands and their boundaries, misappropriation of national resources, theft of water, etc., and abolition and discrimination of Sindhi and other national languages in favor of Urdu. Such violations, repeated and constant betrays of Pakistani establishment has created a serious dilemma for the people of Sindh, who seek equal rights and prosperity for their region by peaceful means only. Self-defeating behaviors are increasing among our people of Sindh and Balochistan manifest in the rising rates of suicides, intertribal clashes, and violent crimes, drug addiction, and violence against women. Needless to say that hopelessness and self-defeating behaviors are dangerous and end up in violence itself. Pakistan is a state of denial existence of its nation. Just six months ago, hundreds of thousands of Sindhi nation has stood for their, their rightful struggle called Freedom March. So it is the imperative that international activists and intellectuals give consideration to the case of Sindh and Balut. We request the international community to stop their support for Pakistani establishment, stop their financial support to the Pakistani military, stop their financial support to anti-people projects like coal mining project, Gawadar project, oil exploration project, stop the violence against its own people as well as other peoples across its border, convince Pakistan to return to true democracy by granting all of this nation the right of self-determination and put pressure on Pakistan to abolish all laws discriminating women and re religious minorities. Thank you very much.